Tony, what do you feel like you learned about your team tonight? Um, you know, that's interesting. I, I think there was just some information there with individual plays that were pretty valuable, and some of them uh, involved experienced guys, and some of them involved new guys. Uh, I, I think some guys were in the box fighting. I think maybe a little bit more toughness there than we were giving some guys credit for. And Western Kentucky might say they didn't throw as many strikes as they wanted to, but I think a part of it was our guys battling at the plate and, and then our pitchers too. I think they didn't throw as many strikes as we wanted them to either. I think when you go from your scrimmage umpires, with all due respect, I mean, it does have a little different flavor. Sometimes we're the umpires to a game setting like this. The guys got to realize they're going to have to hit their spot to get a strike. Yeah, 14 innings and I, a lot of guys through. Overall, your thoughts about uh, your pitchers? Um, you know, it was good. It was good to see Nick Abraham's presence to start the second game. I think, uh, you know, Sharman just walked by a little bit ago after he gave up a solo, which we gave up. A, uh, it feel like, felt like a handful of those. Uh, started to throw the ball with a little bit more conviction. And we were joking in the dugout. Sometimes you like to see those guys come out of the gates throwing the way they would if they did get punched in the mouth. But, um, you know, for the most part, I, th I think starting with Liam, uh, looking pretty good. Uh, the guys who followed were in the vicinity of where they need to be. Uh, but the reason you play these games is to see what you need to iron out. And like everybody else in the country, it's it's early for us. There's lots to iron out. What have you liked so much about Liam to this point? And why was he the choice to, to go first in this one? Um, you know, part of it is uh, what days guys are available doing this deal where we're going to play two games and or our two dates, however they're going to term it, uh, all in one weekend. Um, he was available, but also just kind of the attitude. We talked very briefly as a team. It's a little late at night. We'll, we'll revisit the whole weekend when we get back to Knoxville. Uh, but the one thing that was pointed out is, you know, presence and kind of self-belief carries a lot of weight. And he definitely has that, um, you know. So we'll, we'll see what other guys compliment him, what his role is. But he was a great choice to kind of be the lead dog tonight. How have his pitches, but also his physique, how have those things changed since he got to Knoxville? Yeah, I think he's developed physically a little bit already. Um, he's going to hit the most valuable part of the year where it's at two months, you know, really November and December when you put the ball down and um, you're almost like training for a, a UFC fight or a boxing match. And so hopefully he can continue in that area. And then pitching wise, just as he would, you know, at any point, you know, going from freshman to sophomore to junior year, you start to get a little more picky um, or a little more specific about what you're working on. So they've broken down some things that are pretty, pretty specific and have used the analytics and the technology and all that. And I stay out of the way. It looked good to me for the most part after the first couple pitches. There he is. He's not shy. Um, <laughs> after the first couple pitches were out of the zone, he was, he was locked in. He likes to compete. Is that a, attributed to the uptick? It looks like he's throwing harder. I know it's a small sample size, but has all that type of stuff, the, you know, the, the strength and conditioning, the nutrition, all that kind of aided in that below? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if anything, the goal for us, regardless of what his best bullet would be, I mean, since he's been a sophomore in high school, there's been a good progression there of velocity. Our thing, or my own little deal, is I'd like to see him hold his velocity longer in the games. And, um, you know, sometimes because he's a strikeout pitcher, he got a little too high pitch count last year. Uh, but also he probably faded a little bit. And I think, you know, he needs to be passionate about, you know, being as good as he can be physically, not just throwing the baseball, but also being as good as he can be with recovery and all the things that go into, you know, being a starting pitcher where you, you got a weak routine and it's almost like you're preparing for, like a football team would. One crack at it on a weekend and then back to it again. What stood out about the freshman bats? Um, you know, Jay's been good. Um, he's, he's really athletic in the box and tried to show off kind of the bunt skills a little bit. Um, but he competed with two strikes and had a couple at bats where he struck the ball early. So getting to the point that he's a very well-rounded hitter and um, he's got some fight in him for, for a younger kid. He didn't seem to be too worried about all the fans that were here um, or the fact that we were finally playing another team. So, and then the other guys too, I mean, Manny, Manny's got a chance to do about anything that you can come up with right now. Uh, but you guys saw that. So he looked good and, and, and Newstrom, you know, has a knack for finding the barrel too. And Levi probably will go back to the locker room saying either, thank goodness I got a hit or I can do way better than that. And it's both are true. Um, so it'll be fun to follow those guys. And I'm leaving some guys out. You know, you can call Stone a freshman now, but he acts and looks like a guy that's an upperclassman. So when you play that many innings, it's that late at night and you use that many guys, 
we could go on and on. What'd you what, see on? Oh, I'm sorry. What'd which I can do if you want, but I don't think you guys want to. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you see on Fisher's home run to kind of get the ball rolling? Yeah, that was um, electric because of how far he hit it. And, um, you know, what I saw is, um, yeah, I just think it's an interesting topic on the whole bat. I'm, I'm old school. I'm for just put your head down and run or pitcher strike guy out. But I think pitchers, I think, I think things have swayed in their favor where they can kind of do a little deal after they strike a guy out pretty often and without repercussion. But um, the umpire did a good job tonight, and he was right on top of Fish. He didn't want him doing anything crazy with the bat or anything else. But I think Fish just wanted to turn to the dugout, and he was excited. Um, but then, you know, we hustled down to first base, and um, it definitely wasn't a wall scraper. And it got the crowd into it, which is – I think we've kind of lived this deal a few times where it's a neutral site. It's not really a home game, but it's supposed to be a home game, and all the, the ball fans are here. And I think the guys feel pressure to provide entertainment instead of just play ball. That's kind of been the vibe before. But tonight, the guys are pretty even keel, and it was you know just fortunate there was fireworks in the air the first inning with Dean and Liam throwing the ball the way he did, and of course, Fish is homer. What did you see from Marcus and Binky, and how would you assess their fall up until this point? Yeah, Binky's been um, you know, pretty good. I, I think, if anything, um, consistency w would be uh, something he's hunting. I mean, that outing he had at the SEC tournament was in a category of, I don't know how many, but if you had your, your favorite innings of the year in a box, that, that would be there, regardless of what pitcher. Um, so can you replicate that? or at least be in, in the realm of that on a consistent amount of time. So the fall, I would say the word consistency. And then Marcus has been good, you know, tonight just wasn't a very good night for him. And at times the pace was a little slower for him and some of our other pitchers. And um, you can only guess, but you know, is there a little bit of extra thinking there? And you know, it's, a, it's a, almost impossible to get out there and not think about anything and just be in a zone or whatever you want to call it, or be in a flow state and all that yoga stuff. But um, you, you can simplify your thoughts and, and, and think about the one task that's in front of you, but it wasn't the only case where I was just kind of wondering in the dugout, you know, are the wheels spinning a little too much for, for somebody? So, you know, the thing about him is you guys have seen how well he can throw the ball. He knows that. Um, a guy that's a true competitor will be really anxious to get out there and, and kind of have an answer or a response to that the next time he gets the ball. How do you feel about Perry defensively at first base tonight? Is that what you want to see? Or? Yeah, it was interesting because um, he's been working so hard at picks and stretching and on the one quirky play to no fault in the zone, he's just trying. He's, he, he didn't need to stretch and, you know, kind of miss that play. Well, later in the inning, he gets an opportunity to help Dino out, and that was really an incredible catch. And then the pop-up, which was fair or foul, um, it, it, you know, it was interesting how it landed, but um, – you know, he's pretty athletic, so most guys don't get in a position to catch that ball, but he did not. So he's progressing, and um, maybe needs to have a sit down with, with Todd Helton one of these days. Todd probably knows more than I do, but we've all just tried to, you know, work with him, and the attitude's been phenomenal, and he's not the only one. And I think last year's team led, you know, in, in, a, in a weird way is leading this team too because the blueprint's there. And you got to kind of be able to work outside of your comfort zone. And um, some of those guys have done that. I think Manny took ground balls at second, short, and third tonight. Uh, but he's, he's clearly a, a, a pretty dang good shortstop. Sticking with defense, Fisher, what, what did you like from him tonight? And where is he That one inning where he made two plays was, was outstanding. Um, speaking of outstanding, our home plate umpire in the first inning got from home to third to make a call quicker than any umpire I've ever seen. But um, there was two plays in one inning that were not easy. And uh, not only did he make them, but he kind of made it, you know, look like a pro making them. So I think he had like a two-day patch where it wasn't great over there. Um, but every other day has been really encouraging. And um, it's, been, it's been fun to watch that position at Tennessee. It's been interesting. Um, with all due respect, we struggled to find the uh, – usually something's good not, not coming right after that, I guess. So <laughs> scratch the with all due respect. We just were – we're fighting to find, you know, the best third baseman for us this the first year of our our tenure here, and then after that, it's been one dude after another that's been pretty fun to be around and pretty fun to watch. But your catchers denied it. You know, Cannon had to throw out at second. Stone looked like he had him at second. Yeah, Cannon had a he had his work cut out for him tonight. You know, again, 
Uh, I think both staffs didn't throw as many strikes as they're capable of. He had a lot of balls to block, um, and he wants to win so bad, he's probably exerting more calories than the average Joe anyway. Um, and then Stone, again, he, he doesn't really act like a guy that's his age. I mean, whether it's off the field or you know, on the field. He's certainly a fun guy, but he's, he's really mature physically and also mentally. And uh, we got a lot of trust in him back there. But right now, Peebles has done so well. Um, it's interesting being in this park because he tore it up last year uh, with the bat, kind of refreshed the memory. And we inherited a guy that's a very good player. And he's slowly making progress every day in a bunch of different areas. So it's fun to be around. What do you like about the possibility of the pairing of Dean and Fisher as kind of the three, four in whichever way that, that could fall? Yeah, um, and that was kind of made up spur of the moment. And we mapped out the pitchers more than anything. Um, and then you get going there and uh, in an ideal world, we had a plan with Ensley, but uh, that, that first game was really competitive. So um, just kind of threw it out there and you got two pretty physical guys that if, if you're in the other dugout, it's you got a scheme for it and it's a headache to deal with. And tonight, fortunately, we had Ensley who's, um, you know, like a cockroach, it's impossible to you know, to get rid of them. If, if you're working for Tennessee, it's definitely impossible to get rid of them. And then you probably got that vibe in the other dugout too. But I think Gavin was after those guys tonight, or Peebles and Gavin. I mean, that, that's, that's some firepower right there too. So I think regardless of where we put guys, um, there's some good firepower, but there's some other guys to need to recognize there's, there's some spaces available too around those guys. Do you have a pitching plan for who would start on Sunday? Um, probably Sneed. I uh, hadn't talked to those guys. And um, the cool thing is Tegan is a kid um, that turned down good money, like a lot of these kids in the locker room. Uh, and Arvidsson also. Um, I think draft got really hairy. Um, asked both those guys, do you care when you throw the ball? And they both said, just whatever you think is best, which is, you know, I don't think they realize what that means in this day and age. It's refreshing and it's a stress reliever. And uh, I'd like to win the first game. And I know, you know, we know the coaches at Troy, and we also know that that program's up and coming, including their facility. Um, they're going to want to win too. So I'd like to put those guys in the best spot for us to win the game, not necessarily the best spot for them, because they're good enough, they're good enough and they're confident enough. It shouldn't matter. Thanks, Doug.